in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome to Monday Manna. My name is Pam Gonzalez and I have the privilege of sharing with you today. The passage I will be referencing is Lamentations 3, 19 through 23. My message is entitled, What Mercy Did for Me. Lamentations 3, beginning at verse 19, read, Remember my affliction and roaming, the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, hallelujah, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. What do you think of when the Bible speaks of God's mercy, or just mercy in general? The dictionary defines mercy as refraining from harming others, a disposition to forgive or be kind, a blessing, all of which is good. However, God defines mercy in Lamentations itself in verse 22 as being love and compassion. In other words, mercy is not giving to another what one deserves. Therefore, mercy demonstrates God's grace in action by putting the needs of another above the needs of self, especially since it often comes with some level of personal expense or sacrifice. Have you ever been in a situation where you asked or sought forgiveness and it was not granted? Asked for help that wasn't forthcoming? Asked for understanding that is not offered? Asked for patience that was not extended? This can be especially painful when we implore someone to, you know, cut me a little slack or how about a bit of compassion or a little mercy here? Yet what is received is a boom of judgment and condemnation. Want to do that again? The word mercy is derived from the medieval Latin word merced or mercis, meaning price paid. I'm sure you already know where I'm headed with this. The Book of Lamentations is the writer's narrative expressing extreme grief over the destruction and invasion of Jerusalem, his beloved city. Yet in the midst of all of his pain and heartache, he pins the words in Lamentations 3. This is a statement of faith if ever I have heard one, standing strong in the midst of darkness and suffering. Let's fast forward several hundred years for God in his infinite love sends his own son to become the ultimate, tangible example of mercy. Though we didn't deserve it, Romans 5 says, but God. I do love it when a passage has, but God included in it. And it says, verse eight, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God, instead of leveling wrath on us, chose to remember mercy. Aren't you thankful for his mercy today? That's new every morning. It's fresh every morning. His faithfulness is so great. I know I am. And our receipt of God's mercy, I close with Micah 6, 8, one of my favorites. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Precious Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly this afternoon. I thank you, sweet Jesus, for your sacrifice, for mercy that was made tangible when you hung on Calvary's cross, for God making a way to bring us back into right standing with himself. Lord, I pray that as your sons and daughters go through their week, they'll spend some time resonating on your mercy, reflecting on the goodness of our, of our God. I praise and thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Have a blessed week and in that spend a bit of time reflecting on what God's mercy did for you. Until next week, bye for now.